Okay, today is the big day. It's a big day where I go from my two flooded batteries to the king of lithium batteries, Battleborn. I'm just going to go to one. I'm thinking one's going to work for me. Uh, originally, when I first was going to do this, I was going to take this battery, put it up here in this space. It will not hold two of these. These batteries are a little bit bigger. It only hold one up in this front. But the reason I'm trying to change my ideal after seeing a few things in Facebook and what I want to do now is I'm going to put this on board through this cargo compartment in the FD model over here and I'll show you how I want to do that. But uh, what made me change my mind is originally I was worried about having to take all these wires rerouting everything but I actually saw someone on Facebook that did a junction box up here and uh what i'm going to do i'm not going to put the junction box i'm going to leave the box intact but i'm going to empty it out and basically have a junction box built in here where my my black terminals and my red terminals terminate up here and i'm going to use this little setup right here on a board and i'll show you how i do that where i have a terminal board basically inside of there and then I found out something inside of here. If you have an FD model of the Geo Pro, you don't have to tear any of these wires. You don't have to go in here and, and route through wires or anything. You have an inverter here in this side. And this inverter has a line right here. These have a, a, black, and a, white, a black and a red line. And that runs directly to the battery. So with that running directly to the battery... And it, it, it's just hot all the time. Whether it, whether you have your disconnect off or not, this is always hot. So it's just a basically a line, a heavy-duty line going from here all the way around to out here. And uh, it ties in here and over there. So by me tying these together out here, it will still allow me to use my cutoff switch for the rest of the camper. And what it will do inside of here... If you notice on this terminal block right here, there's an extra slot. So I'm going to run my slot out of here, my black and my red out of that, and then hook into, I'm going to put a shunt in here. That way I can control and see what power I'm losing and how much I have left. I'll be able to control that through here. So I've actually, I'll show you here where I took this panel apart to get into where, what it looks like right now. But for now, we're going to take loose this, which has two screws down here, Phillips, and two screws in the side. Okay, and after I did all that, I got to this point here. And what I did is I went ahead and I put, these are actually decking boards. They're actually from a, a composite decking boards I cut. Just the way I don't want to really have wood in here. I want to be relatively light, and I don't want anything to conduct electricity. So I've actually mounted a piece here. And mounted a piece here on the front edge and the reason that is is i've got this setup where i can put that battle board in here it's going to have a couple inches space and then i'm going to have one board here holding the actual shunt and then underneath what i'm going to do is have a, an actual piece of thin plywood it lays on top of here that way i can utilize this complete compartment without having to worry about this battery and simply in the uh fall when i'm ready to to take it up you know pick the battery out for the winter i'll just go in here empty the, the compartment pull that little panel off and lift my battery out and store it in my garage so i'm going to start getting some of this stuff together and show you how i'm going to do it so stay with me and we'll get her done so when you're working in this compartment you'll see there's this plug here and it's designed to be the hot plug that goes into your actual inverter it just runs from the normal whenever you hook the shore power. So my plan here is I'm just gonna cut this off. We're gonna make it a double and we're gonna bring it outside my battery box area and I'm gonna have it mounted here somewhere or over in here. But anyway, I'm gonna mount it over here and have two plugs that way I can use my inverter. And if I wanna do a charge on my battery, I'm gonna have a hookup for that and a place to plug that in. So we're gonna disconnect this for now and leave it outside until I get a chance to get a new plug. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and remove the batteries. I'm going to be cautious with this as I do this. I don't want any of these terminals to touch each other. 
once I get the batteries out, I still got to be a little bit cautious because I've still got a wire running in here from my solar. And I could deactivate the solar somehow, but I don't want to deal with all that right now. So just going to be careful not to have any of these wires, once I take it off here, hit the frame or anything. So we'll take care of that now. What you see there is where it was actually wired in uh, parallel. I went ahead and took those cables off because I won't be using those. But what I've got here, I disconnected. I did a zip tie. I'm not sure if I'll keep that on there. I'll just put it in there for just to bundle them up for now. I wrap this up with some rubberized tape just so it won't short against anything while I'm doing this work. Like I say, I'm going to set these off to the side. So basically now I'm going to get these batteries out of here and clean up the box. So there they are out of there. There's no liquid in here, but I'm going to have to wipe it out just to clean it out a little bit. I may eventually make a little tool kit on one side. That way I can store like a bottle jack and a few things that I won't ever hardly ever use but it'll be a place to store it so I may put something up here eventually for that a little basket or something as long as it doesn't mess with my junction so got this set up and so this is a terminal board bought these two terminals on Amazon and uh, basically use a piece of decking board in here just got two stainless steel screws on each side to hold that in place basically got it all black on one side red on the other side and that way if anybody wants to come back here and put traditional batteries back in it they can do that so that way i've everything's still going to work the same all this will go through the same way i just have the battery in the other compartment so now we're going to go and work on the other compartment and we'll see how it goes so after about a couple hours of figuring all this stuff out you saw what i've already done out here for the junction basically come inside here and you'll see everything hanging out and what I've done I dropped the battery in there I have put my shunt right here and what I did is I ran the negative for the system to the negative over here on the inverter and that should work out for us and then uh, here's the positive You'll see this red one going in. That's the positive coming out. That's the one that will hook into the battery positive here. And then my negative is coming out of my shunt. Going down underneath. And it will go in over here on this side. And then I also have power up my shunt. I have this line here. Which goes in right to the shunt part there. That will go with the red side. And then, last of all, I had to do a little bit of rigging because I couldn't get this to fit properly. But what I have here now is I have my charger system set up in here. Here's my plug for charging my, plugging in my charger out here. So I have that set up. And what it is, it's going to the system side of the, uh, of the shunt. That way it'll read. Anytime I charge, it'll read through that charger until tell how much I put into the battery so a few other things is you'll see this plug here on the ground there that's the one that has a single plug I, I cut it off and I'm gonna double make a double plug here somehow and attach where I have two plugs here this is the wire coming out for that and that's where this inverter will plug into you're running out of the inverter it was plugged into that line so it'll have one hot line for that inverter another hot line for my plugging in my charger so so what the plan is is get all this hooked up now make sure everything works and then we're going to make a board that goes across here and that way we have all this storage space and the fd model here i'll have all this storage space on top i may even put a cover over top of my shunt there and that way I can put things in there without having to worry about it. Shorten out the battery or anything like that. So we're going to get this thing put back together a little bit more. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So I've got the battery completely hooked up. I still got to do a little work on putting me a shelf in here. But uh, got everything tightened down. I'm going to have to put a pool noodle or something in here. Just to keep this from shifting around. Not too bad back and forth because it's pretty well wedged in there but I need something to keep it from banging from side to side so I'll put a foot pull noodle or a piece of foam in there like I said I still got to run an electrical wire here this is my plug 
that goes into the inverter so i have to rig that up everything's working so far i've done the shunt so what i'm going to yeah. do now is put everything back together put that shelf in and i'm going to go in here and show you what i did to get all this stuff checked out and working okay first thing you have to do is set your solar controller if you've got the geo pro you've got the gold power and if you've got one after 2020 you've got one with the it actually has a setting for a lithium battery if not you probably need to get one of these because this will be the what takes it to the top and i will also have a charger hookup i'll show you that when i get it all hooked together i've got a charger that i can plug in too out there if i'm hooked to, to uh power so i had to go in here like i say set it to the lithium batteries and then for some reason my solar didn't work right off the bat so what i had to do is push all four buttons in that's a soft reset and now it's showing my solar working it's pulling doing about one 1.2 amps right now so that's going to keep it charged to a higher rate okay as far as downloading the victron app you have to go download it it looks like this one right here and then you turn it on and i've actually had the charger also is on this too if i turn on the charger it'll also give me information so when you first go in you're going to have to it's going to have a default code to, to go into it you can set your own code as far as the bluetooth then once you get in there it's probably going to do some firmware updates which mine did and then it's going to show you I, i'm not going to get too much into this app because i have to do some reading on it myself but the nice thing about it is it gives you very good accurate readings here's your voltage i'm going to get figure all this up it's got a nice history on here and you i did go have to go in here i'll show you i had to go in here and set the amp hours so i went in here to that little wheel at the top right corner hit battery and then battery capacity it was set at like 200 amp hours so i had to bring that down to 100 amps and i'm gonna have to probably look at my owner's manual for my battery and do some adjustments on some of these settings but uh also i started with a full battery that way i could i went ahead and did the synchronization synchronize here which actually tells it it's a it's at a hundred percent so it kind of uses that as a as a leveling playing field and this thing will do it it has a trend in here it's pretty nice you can see it's it you can break it down and you can decide what you want to chart in here so again i've got to figure this app out and move on because there's a lot of things i've got to see what i want to keep a track of so i'm going to go over a little real quick why i did what i did with my uh, battery system um i just wanted something more reliable and uh went with the battleborn one 100 hour amp hour because uh, I have a LP refrigerator so pretty much that should do me if you've got a 12 volt refrigerator you might want to think about getting a 200 amp hour and maybe find a different location to store it but uh, as you can see I've got it all buttoned up now there's no no batteries in there just a junction box and uh, inside of here is what it looks like here this is my compartment I'm gonna tack down this this old material here just to keep from getting anything in there that way I can use this whole area here and uh you can see I'm going to take this out how it is to access the battery you just take this stuff out and uh basically there's your stuff there and this little panel right here is going to lift up that's my access to my battery and you can see I've got the pull noodles in the front and the side that keeps it from shifting around but uh, I think that's gonna work out pretty good I've still got to add my plug out here and I'm gonna figure out how to do that soon I'm just gonna go over the lows and get some materials for that yeah and but, uh, one other thing I didn't show you was this is the blue smart charger I'm gonna have this in here too and it'll plug in I'll show you here there's a plug right here I've hooked into the system and I'm going to be able to plug that up and charge this battery if I feel like it needs a charging or a topping off. If my solar doesn't seem like it's putting it all the way up, then I'll have that ability to plug this in. Got one terminal running through my shunt and one terminal running through the, through the positive here. 
so that will charge my battery and then also meter it through my shunt to let me know when I, how much I charged it. So that's about all I have. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. There are a lot of people who are interested in doing this. So we're really looking forward to getting ready to hit up the road. Hopefully end of the month is March. We get, might get out camping or if not by early April, we should be able to get out. So may not dewinterize until maybe middle of April. We'll see how things go. So that's about all I have. And I hope this helps you out in making a decision to do a project like this.